This video answers the question, how to create a decision tree for risk analysis. There are three features in a decision tree that are important. First, the alternatives. These are the decisions that we're trying to choose between, uh, the options that are available to us. The conditions. These are the various uh, states of nature, the things that are uncertain, and outcomes. These are the consequences um, of uh, the combination of certain alternative decisions that we make and the conditions. Alternatives will be represented with a, a box, which we will call a decision node. And there will be discrete paths coming out of this box, which are the various alternatives that we can choose from. Conditions will be represented by a circle or a chance node. And there will be discrete states of nature that, that could occur. Sometimes uh, when our state of nature can be represented by a continuous distributed variable, we might represent the chance node like this. Outcomes will simply be a table at the end of each of the branches. So the combination of decisions and chances, uh, or states of nature, alternatives and states of nature will result in specific pathways through this decision tree. And there will be some kind of metrics that we use to measure the outcomes that result from those conditions and alternatives very simple decision tree, that of bringing an umbrella to work. So the alternatives are bring an umbrella or leave the umbrella at home. The conditions might be that it will rain or not rain. Um, if it rains, it might. we might be concerned with whether it rains in the morning, the evening, or all day. Um, if it rains in the evening, we might be concerned whether we remember the umbrella or forget it. And uh, the outcomes could be a whole bunch of different metrics, but let's just consider something that's objectively verifiable, that we minimize uh, that, that the number of minutes uh, lost at work. So this is what the decision tree might look like. Um, we start on the left with the decision node, and uh, there are two alternatives to bring the umbrella or to leave it. Whether we bring the umbrella or not, um, we might be concerned with whether it will rain. And uh, the decision tree does not have to be symmetric, but in this case, uh, whether it rains or doesn't rain is independent of the alternative that uh, we choose. And so these two decision nodes actually need to be equal. Sometimes we even label these uh, C1 chance nodes, C2, C3, C4, and then we can write information down at the bottom. Um, if it does rain uh, and we brought our umbrella, we might be concerned with whether it rains all day or, or the morning or whether it just rains in the evening because if it rains in the evening, then we might be concerned with whether we forget or remember the umbrella. Uh, on the other hand, um, if we leave the umbrella and it rains, uh, we might have different uh, losses depending on whether it rains the morning, the evening, or all day. And so this is just to illustrate that these chance nodes don't have to be symmetric. Um, they just have to have some kind of uh, logical, uh, 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 rational representation as we move from left to right. So the next thing that we want to do is kind of parameterize um, these outcomes. You know, what are the minutes lost at work? And so. To do this, to, to make this estimation, what we're going to do is we're going to go down the tree. So if we bring the umbrella and there's no rain, then we might lose uh, two minutes because we have to put the umbrella away. If we bring the umbrella and it rains uh, in the morning or all day, uh, we might lose uh, uh, ten, 10 minutes just to put our wet umbrella away. If, if we bring the umbrella and it rains only in the evening, then we're concerned with whether we remember it. If we remember the umbrella, we're probably fine. Um, if we forget the umbrella in the evening, then we're going to have to go back and get it, so it's going to take us 30 minutes. Um, and again, if we leave the umbrella and there's no rain, 
Um, it doesn't cost us any time. If we leave the umbrella and it rains in the morning, then we're going to have to take some time to dry off. We're going to have to get ourselves prepped so that we can do our work uh, in comfort. If it rains in the evening, we might stare at the window trying to figure out the right time to leave. And if it rains both, then we might lose 20 minutes. The next thing that we have to do is we have to parameterize the probabilities that uh, we'll go down one of the paths in the chance nodes. So let's just say we have a forecast and uh, it's equally likely that it will rain and not rain. Well, these two chance nodes are the same, so we have to propagate that information down here. Uh, let's say it's equally likely that it will rain in the evening and it will rain all day. So 0.5 again and 0.5 here. 0.5 and let's say uh, just to split this up notice that uh, each chance node all of the discrete paths that come out of that chance node need to add to one because those have to be all the possible outcomes from that chance node all the possible states of nature um, let's say that we're pretty forgetful so there's about a one in five chance that we're going to forget now what we want to do is estimate the um, some metric. So there's different metrics that we can use. Um, in this case, the most common and the one that I'm going to show is expected value, but we could also use the worst case down both paths, the most likely down both paths. So I'll just talk a little bit about each of those metrics, but we'll focus on expected value. So the way that we're going to start with do expected value is we're going to start from the end and uh, then we're going to fold back. So 0 0.8 times 0 plus 0 0.2 times 30 is a fifth of 30, which is 6. So the expected value here is, is 6 minutes. 0 0.5 times 6 and 0 0.5 times 10, that's uh, 5 plus 8. 5 plus 3 is 8. So the expected value of minutes that lost if it rains is 8. That's 50% uh, of 8 plus 50% of 2. That's 4 plus 1 is 5 minutes. So we can do the same calculation down here. A quarter of 20 is, is 5. Half of 6 is 3. A quarter of 16 is 4. So that's uh, 12. Half of 12 plus half of 0 is 6. So what we want to do is minimize the amount of time lost at work and so we're going to select this bring uh, our umbrella option. But um, we might also want to minimize the worst case. Um, so down this bring the umbrella path uh, the worst case is 30 which is this, this pathway through the decision tree. Um, and the worst case uh, in the leave is 20. And so to minimize the worst case, we're also going to end up bringing, uh, we might also want to look at uh, the most likely. Um, the most likely path in both cases is that it won't rain. Um, so that's two minutes uh, that we might lose if it doesn't rain here and, and zero minutes that we might lose so in that case we might uh, decide to uh, leave our umbrella at home. Now, this can be done uh, using all sorts of different tools that are custom made. Here's how this might look in an Excel spreadsheet um, that can be created very easily. Uh, basically, all of these uh, yellowish cells are ones that are parameters that uh, the user can change. The others are formulas uh, that make sure that the, the states of nature uh, equilibrate and that there's equivalence uh, across similar states of nature to maintain consistency across the decision tree chance nodes. Um, and then this orange shell um, cell is the one that's calculated. So if we were to, to change this probability here, then we would see, let's change it to 0.4, we would see that the uh, expected value changes and depending on these probabilities, um, our decision to um, bring or leave our umbrella might change. Um, similarly, if we change outcomes, 
or if we change some of the other distributions, then it could potentially change our answer. So that's a, that's a simple example for a decision tree. A couple key points. Um, you build the decision tree with decisions, decision nodes that represent the alternatives, conditions that represent the various states of nature uh, that could are probabilistic, and uh, these outcomes that represent uh, some kind of metric uh, that is the result of a combination of uh, alternatives that are selected, conditions, and outcomes. Um, we then parameterize uh, with uh, these probabilities of states, uh, the outcomes, uh, measures, and uh, then we start at the end, kind of like uh, Covey's uh, principle, uh, one of Covey's principles that you start with the end in mind. So we'll start at the end and we'll fold back until uh, according to the, the metric that's appropriate, um, worst case, most likely expected value, 